now we'll be talking about joint variation and what is joint variation joint variation is a variation where a quantity varies as the product of two or more quantities so so far we've talked about direct and inverse variation and in direct example variation we talked about how the quantity that is being sold by a trader is proportional to the money that is being made and in inverse variation we talked about how the speed is being inversely proportional to the time that is taken so if you look at these two cases here we can see that one quantity q is proportional to just one quantity l and in this second example under inverse we see that just one quantity the speed is that inversely proportional to just one quantity the time in the case of joint variation we have one quantity being proportional to more than one variable so you have a quantity being proportional to more than one variable for example you have a being proportional to maybe b and c or you have a being proportional to b over c or you have a being proportional to b squared c so what it just means is that you have a being proportional to more than one variable in this case a is proportional to two variables here two variables here two variables and finally if you have a being proportional to b c d you have three variables so when you have more than two variables that a is being proportional to then you call that a joint variation so a joint variation is a variation where a quantity varies as the product of two or more quantities so let's look at an example the sheet m of a sheet of metal so let's Im imagine we have an iron rod now don't mind my diagram so let's assume we have an iron rod now and this is the iron rod yes so now it's directly proportional to both the area and the thickness of the metal so what does this mean now imagine like this is my length and this is my breadth so this surface on top represents the area so imagine i increase the area of the metal of the metal bar or the metal sheet what happens the weight is going to increase because the sheets will get bigger how about the thickness if i make the thickness bigger what will happen the iron sheet is going to get bigger and it's going to weigh more so as you can even see from the diagram this rod here has a bigger area and a greater thickness and therefore we weigh more than this metal sheet so here we can see that the mass is directly proportional to the area because as the area increases the mass also increases and the mass is also proportional to the thickness t t represents thickness here so as the thickness increases the mass increases so if you combine these two variations we can see the mass is proportional like proportional to both the area and the thickness so that means that as the area increases the mass increases and as the thickness increases the mass increases let's look at another example so the inside temperature of a house is directly proportional to the outside temperature and inversely proportional to the wall thickness so what does this mean so now let's imagine you are in your house now so you're in your house so you are over here now and the temperature inside the house is t so let's assume the temperature of the surrounding outside is s the temperature outside is s so assuming there is no air conditioning system inside your house you just have and you open the windows down what will happen when the temperature outside is hot like if the sun is very shiny what happens then inside too is going to be very hot and this explains why during the daytime the inside of your house is very hot and at night the inside of the house is relatively cooler because during the daytime outside the outside temperature is greater than at night so as you can see as the temperature outside increases the temperature inside also increases so we can see that what the temperature is directly proportional the inside temperature is directly proportional to the outside temperature then what about the wall thickness so let's assume you have your house now and you have an insulation system which is this thick 
So now, what would this wall do? It will prevent or reduce the rate of heat transfer between inside and outside. So if the wall is very thin, what happens? It is able to what, come inside more, more quickly. So when the thickness is small, there is more temperature inside because it can flow very well. But imagine you have a very thick wall. Now this is the one that is so thick. So you can see the thickness here from here to here. This is the wall thickness. So what happens when the wall is very thick? The insulation rate will be very high. So it means that it will not be able to flow inside very well. So the more you increase the thickness of the wall, then the lesser the internal temperature. So here we can see that the inside temperature is inversely proportional to the thickness, meaning the more the thickness, the less the temperature. The smaller the thickness, the higher the temperature. So how can we combine these together? So we can say the temperature is directly proportional to the inside temperature is directly proportional to the outside temperature S and at the same time is inversely proportional to the wall thickness. So we write it as T being proportional to S over T. So how do we remove the proportionality sign as before? We just replace it with an equal to sign and add the constant. So here we just have T is equal to K S over T. And the previous example that we did where we have M being proportional to A T, it just becomes M is equal to, we include a K, K, A, T. So as usual, what do we have to do? We need to find the constant of proportionality. Then when we find it based on one instance, then we can substitute it back to get the general equation. So let's look at some examples to see how this works. So now, we are told that the weight of a metal bar, the weight W of a metal bar, varies jointly as length that means varies jointly so you have direct measure on the length and the square of the diameter so it varies directly as both the length and the square of the diameter and i should mention that when you don't see any form of like inverse or varies inversely then you should just assume that everything is just direct variation so it varies directly as the length and as the square of the diameter so to move this proportionality sign we have a constant we have W is equals to KL times D squared. So now we need to find the constant of proportionality like we have always been doing. And how do we go about that? So we have to look at the question and see the instance we are given. In this case, we are given an instance that if W is equals to 140, when D is equals to 5 and L is equals to 54. So we are given an instance that when W is equals to 140, that D is equal to 5 and L is equal to 54. So we can use that to figure out the value of K. So making K the sort of formula first, we have W equals to K L D squared. If we divide both sides by L D squared, what do we have? We have K as being equal to W over L D squared. So now we can find the value of K based on that instance. So K will be equal to the W, which is the weight, which is 140 over the length which is 54 times the diameter squared which is what 5 squared and that will be what 140 over 54 times 25 and that is equals to 140 over 1350 which is equals to 14 over 135 so I can write that now into this equation to get the general form of the equation or the general relationship so I have W is equals to 14 over 135 times L times D squared. But what does the question ask us? The question asks us to find D in terms of W and L. So this is a fancy way of saying make D the subject of the formula. So now we have this, I want to make this sort of formula. So we have W is equals to 14 over 135 times LD squared. So what do we do? We first cross multiply. And that gives us what? 14 LD squared is equals to 135 W. So what do we do now? We divide both sides by 14 L. And when we do that, this goes, cancels this. So I'm left with what? D squared is equals to 135 
w over 14l so to remove the square what do i do i find the square root of both sides so when i find the square root i have what d is equals to what the square root of 135 w over 14l so that is the answer so that is d in terms of w and l so to recap what do we do we first interpret the question they will try to remove the proportionality sign by adding equal to sign and constant they will try to find the value of k given the instance then when we found the value of k to be 14 over 135 we substitute it into the general equation when the general equation w was the subject of formula but the question asks us to find d in terms of w and l so we now have to make d the subject of formula and when we did that we found d to be equal to the square root of 135w over 14l now let's look at one last example that has to do with joint variation so in this example we are told that x varies directly as the product of u and v and inversely as their sum so now we can try to write that out given that x varies directly as the product of u and v product of u and v and inversely you know that inversely will be now over as the sum of u and v to as the sum of u and v so that is what this guy is saying so you have x being proportional to uv over u plus v so directly proportional to the product of u and v and inversely proportional to the sum of u and v so to remove the proportionality sign we add the constant so we add x now is equals to k u v over u plus v where k is equals to the constant the constant constant of proportionality of proportionality so now as we have been doing what is the first thing we have to do we need to find the value of k so we are given an instance in the question i was told that that x is equals to 3 when u is equals to 3 and v is equals to 1. So we can use that to find the value of k. So now, first, we try to make k the subject of formula. So we have x is equals to k u v over u plus v. So we cross multiply and we have what? k u v is equals to x into bracket u plus v. And we divide both sides by uv so we are left with what k being equals to x into bracket u plus v over uv so now we can substitute this value to get the value of k so i thought that when x is 3 that u is 3 so u is 3 and v is 1 over u and v are both 3 and 1 so i'm left with what 3 and 3 plus 1 is 4 over 3. So 3 cancels 3. So I'm left with what? 4. So the value of k is 4. So I can substitute that back into this general into this expression to get the general equation. So I have what now that x is equals to 4 uv over u plus v. But the question now asks us to find the value of x if u equals to 3 and v is equals to 3 so we just need to find x is already subject of formula so we just need to substitute the value of u and v as 3 to find the value of x so we have 4 into bracket 3 for u and 3 for v over u is 3 and v is 3 and that will be what 4 and 3 times 3 is what 9 times 9 over 3 plus 3 is what 6 so 3 here goes 2 times and 3 here goes 3 times 2 here goes 1 time and 2 here goes 2 times so the value of x is equal to 2 times 3 which is equal to 6 so to recap what do we first do we first try to write out the expression based on what is given in the question that x is proportional to the product of v and v and inversely proportional to the sum of v and v so what do we then do we try to find the constant of proportionality then we substitute back to the equation to get the general equation and then we now have to find the value of x if v is equal to 3 and v is equal to 3 
and when we did that we found the value of x to be equals to 6 so this pretty much sums up the idea behind joint variation and in the next module we'll be talking about partial variation